How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have another community questions video for you guys, which is where I put a question on my YouTube community section. You guys go ahead, vote on the poll, which doesn't really matter too much. But the important bit is you leave comments down below to the question that I asked. And the question that I asked today was, what are some things that you do in game to make your life easier? This could be things such as having a banking preset with everything on it or in the way in which your bank is set up. Comment below to help others with great ideas too. So we're going to go through your comments. We're going to see what things you guys do to make your life easier. And then maybe, just maybe, anyone watching can pick up on some stuff and go, that is such a good idea. I'm going to start doing that too. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And do keep an eye out for the next community questions question because that will be up soon. Anyway, guys, let's go. All right, so the first comment says, before I log off for the night, I withdraw what I'll need for my morning routine of daily scape the next day. Captain's log for ports, dungeoneering cape for the mother load more, items for my herb lord daily challenge, dot, 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 which is, I assume, like, etc. This way, I don't risk forgetting about the next day. That's actually a really clever idea, and also it's quite convenient too, because even though you, you're going to log on sometimes, and you're going to think, I need to do my dailies, but you're probably just going to think, you know what, I could just do this first, and then I'll, do, I'll, then I'll do it later on, and then eventually you're just not going to do it. But I don't actually do dailies personally, I just don't find them enjoyable enough for me to bother doing it. I know they are worth doing. I know that there's definitely something that you should do and that I should do. But at the same time, I just don't bother. But this this is a really good idea. And if I was going to do dailies, this is something I would have to do. Because if I didn't do it, I would just never have the motivation to do it. So this is a really, really good idea. And I'm sure this is something that will probably help quite a few people watching. The next comment says, play on mobile. You can effectively grind out AFK skills or tasks at places like work, for example. Wouldn't be max without it. This is actually probably something a lot of people do. And I know this is true because when I'm streaming, a lot of people will be watching me while they're at work and they'll say, oh, I'm just on mobile as well while I AFK this and AFK that. And a lot of people say that they, they basically just leave the phone open and they'll just do something really AFK, like super AFK. But this is so true. Mobile has made the uh, the opportunities to actually AFK your stuff to 99 for max super, super easy. Like it's so convenient. I probably wouldn't have been max without mobile either for a long time from when I did. So like it probably would have took me another probably five to six months probably without it because I just didn't have the time to actually sit on the computer and do it and especially with kids and stuff It's just not something I had the opportunity to do But whipping my phone out and just leaving it on the couch while watching a movie at night time and just tapping on like a tree every now and again to cut it down or the ivy whatever I was doing for wood cutting makes your life a hell of a lot easier you don't have to really pay much attention to the game you can just afk get your skills up and then before you know it you've got another 99 mobile is great even if you don't specifically want to play a mobile if you have anything afk to do and you just don't have the time to do it all the time then it's worth downloading and giving it a try absolutely the next comment says keybind in action at number one or number two and creating presets to automatically equip and start the action with a single type. So I think what this person is saying is if you are doing something, for example, fletching a bank and it's bank standing stuff or herb law even, for example, you could set up your preset and then you could also drag whatever item onto your action bar that's actually going to start the crafting. So, for example, if you were doing fletching, you could drag the arrowheads onto your actual action bar and put that on number one and number two as well. So what you, this would do is as soon as you load your preset, you can press the exact same button again. So if your fletching preset is on number one, you can then press number one again and then press space bar and you're done. You don't have to do anything else. There's no clicking. There's literally nothing else. All you need to do is that. All you would need to do to click is click the bank and then just same numbers again. I'm sure a lot of people do actually do this while they're doing fletching and all that sort of stuff while they're just AFK at the bank, especially during double XP when you're there for a long time doing a lot of stuff. But for anyone who hasn't done this, honestly, it is such a good thing to do. It's going to save you a lot of effort and it's going to make your life a lot more chill, especially if you want to be watching something like Netflix on the side while you're AFKing these skills. Trust me, this will make it a lot more enjoyable for you to do all your AFK skills at the bank. This is a really good one. Next up, we have Colin Sanders, and you say being in a great active clan has made the largest difference for how enjoyable RuneScape is. From finding partners for PVM and tips from others makes the game easier and more fun. 
So this is, uh, this is huge, honestly. And most of you guys are going to know this. And most of you guys are like, yes, yes, we know. We're in a clan. We're getting a clan. Clans are massive. Clans are great. Clans are so damn good. And I, I actually run one of the clans, if you don't know. And we do still have quite a few spaces left. I'd say around about 30-ish, actually. So maybe not that much. But we do have some inactives that we can organize around to get some more people in if need be. So if you're interested in joining a clan that is active, that is beginner-friendly, and does have endgame stuff at the same time, then do consider joining the Inits as a guest. You're absolutely welcome to stay as a guest. Do whatever as a guest. If you want to go to clan events that are actually scheduled and stuff, you can do that as a guest as well. So get yourself in there. There's a Discord as well, all that sort of stuff. But if you guest in the Inits, ask for an invite if you want to be a clan member. But otherwise, just chill in there. Get some PVM going with some other people. Ask any questions that you want to ask. Everyone's nice and friendly. But this is the whole point of clans, and this is the point that Colin Sanders is making. It is so useful to be in a clan. You can ask questions anytime you want. If you can't find something on the wiki, you can ask, and there's usually people in there that will know the answers to some of the questions, or they'll know where to direct you anyway. Or it is nice and easy to get into groups. There's people who will teach you bosses. There's just there's just so much that a clan offers. You get bonus experience. You get the Citadel. There's, the, there's, there's so much stuff, and you definitely want to be in a clan it's, it's not even just the whole fact of you get all this extra stuff and all that sort of stuff it's the it's the fact that it makes the game feel more like an mmo at the same time so even though you just get a random rubbish drop somewhere if you get a broadcast everyone in that clan is going to start set spamming grats through the clan chat it just makes that rubbish drop feel a little bit more enjoyable because everyone else is saying grats to you but it just makes it feel like more like a community it makes it a lot more enjoyable into the game itself because one you don't want to play in a single player game because that's why you're playing an mmo so it's really important but anyway like i say if you want to join a clan ours is still recruiting for a little while now but even so if you don't want to be a new member just join as a guest and see if you enjoy the time spent there Next, we have having lots of runes banked so you can make Vizwak without wondering if you have runes or not. This is <laughs> this is something that I should have done a while ago. I actually started wanting to do Vizwax because I know it's good money and I use Vizwax a lot. I'm always buying some. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to do it. I know it takes two minutes a day. It's not a big of a deal. I'll just get it done. But I bought all the runes, but I didn't buy that many. I went and did one. I think I did one, literally just, just one trip. And then as soon as I'd done that, I was like, cool, happy days. Let's bank all the stuff. And then as soon as I came back the next day and didn't have the runes for it, I just teleported away. I was like, you know what? Can't be bothered. I can't be bothered going and buying all the different runes. I'm just going to leave it. So I teleported away. So making sure you have a big stock of runes in the bank for this is definitely something that I would suggest you do. And I'm sure a lot of people who do Vizwax probably do this. But for anyone who's going to be starting Vizwax, and maybe you just don't want to be put off it, then this is something that you should definitely do. And I probably am not going to, let's, let's be honest, I'm not going to go back and do Vizwax. Even as much as it is super useful, I just don't have the motivation to do it. It's so weird. As soon as it's like a daily thing, I just can't bring myself to do it. But this is definitely a good one. And honestly, anything that makes your life easy like this saves you time and saves you having to worry about going to buy stuff every time you go to do your Vizwax is definitely a good plan. I like this one. The next comment says portent of item protection and protect item prayer when bossing. Saves you a lot, portent costs less than 50k and prayer is free. This is something I need to do. I die a lot. This is something I need to do. So this is basically saying that if you use protect item prayer and you bring along a portent of item protection. That took me like 10 times to say that by the way. This is like literally like the 10th freaking take of this. But um, you bring that along with you in PVM and it is going to help save you if you die because when you die you, you want to save like another essence of finality or maybe you want to save your next tier 95 weapon or something like that and you don't have to pay for that cost it's going to save you a lot of money if you're someone who takes multiple essence of finalities this may be a good idea for you actually and it might be something that i do consider i really 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 need to get in the habit of using a protect item prayer at least because that is going to save a lot of money and I just don't use it. I know I should keybind it. I know I should set it up properly. But for some reason, I just don't do it and it's stupid. So honestly, if you don't use Protect Item Prayer at least, you should definitely get in the habit of doing that. You don't have to keybind it to set up some quick prayers or something like that. It is something that I'm going to do and it's something that you should all do as well. Throwing in the portent of item protection is another pretty cool idea. If you have a lot of switches, maybe, but you have you, you don't really need like all the food that you've got. You maybe can get rid of one piece of food. Then you could maybe bring that, and that way, if you do die, it actually um, doesn't cost you anywhere near as much. So that's probably not a bad shout either. I can't. I quite like that idea. I didn't even think about stacking those together. Next up, someone says, start flipping in the Grand Exchange before I go on a bossing run. I know flipping isn't for everyone. 
But having your money make you money while you're out making money <laughs> makes things like repair and food or potion costs a lot more negligible. This is so good. This is something that I've wanted to do for a while. I just haven't really put the time into learning flipping properly. I know how to do flipping, but just not in a mo most efficient way. And I always just stress about like, is it selling? Is it buying? And it's something that you kind of need to get used to, right? I used to do flipping quite a bit, a little here and there, but it's just not something that stuck with me. But this comment is so right. If you can do flips, any flips at all, like even just 100k flips here and there, that's 100k profit that you've made while you were just doing bossing anyway. And even though it's 100k, it just pays for like some of the potions, some of the food that you've done. And I know 100k doesn't pay for much, but with practice, you're going to be flipping things like a mill here and there for each hour. And that will just cut out any costs. So it just means that while you're PVMing, any drops you get are pretty much just pure profit because all of your supplies and stuff have been paid for by that flip that you've done. And that is so good. Even if you only aim just to do these like really small value, like not that big profit flips, just the ones that are safe and the ones that are fast and stuff. Even if you just aim on doing that, the two minutes that it takes to update your offer before you go to a boss hour and afterwards, it actually could save you quite a lot of money in the long run. Before you know it, it will add up and you probably would have saved like 100 million supplies. Because you may think 100 hours making 1 million hour flipping is a lot of hours, like 100 hours to make 100 mil. But at the same time, you just need to think like that's 1 mil per hour that you've done bossing at, that you would have done anyway, that you've just saved 1 mil every single time you do it. I don't know. In my head, that just sounds really good. And it's definitely something that I want to get used to. And to be honest, if anyone has any flipping tips, feel free to send me a DM on Discord and let me know because not necessarily items, like I'm not fussed about what items to do and stuff, but like just any little tips that make flipping easier in this situation where you, you do a little offer, you go to PVM, because it just seems a little bit weird for me to balance that out, but if you got any tips on that, let me know. But this is this is such a good one and I really like this and it's something that I'm probably, you, you guys will probably notice I'm going to start doing this, probably. Maybe. We'll see. It's me after all. We'll have, we'll have to see. But anyway, let's fit one more comment into this video. So the last comment says, putting my lodestone teleports on my action bar so they are wonky away for farm runs or for clues. Also using the RuneScape wiki as a homepage and bookmark just in case I might need it to look something up. So dragging the icons from your home teleport is actually something that not a lot of people know about. Like it's a, plenty of people do, but I know there's loads of people that don't even know you can drag them off. You can drag them directly from your lodestone map into a keybind slot and that way you can literally just press a keybind and you'll start teleporting there straight away this works really really well with like quick teleports as well it just just it's just so convenient so for people who do clues like this person people who do farm runs a lot this is a super useful thing to have even if it's just one of your many many action bars that you do have i'm sure you don't use all of them you could probably set up on that and then when you are going to do a farm run or you are going to do an uh, like a any sort of clues or anything you can just load that one up make it sure it's on your screen and then you've got your teleports very very quickly obviously it only saves a few seconds but if you save a few seconds uh, hundreds and hundreds of times then it all adds up so this is a really really useful one as for the having the runescape wiki as your homepage and bookmark the runescape wiki everyone uses this a hell of a lot uh, i i always just google it but at the same time there is something in game as well where you can just search at the bottom left in your chat click the runescape wiki search icon and you can search and it'll open up a page for you there as well but having it as a bookmark definitely makes sense. For any new players watching, the RuneScape Wiki is probably your most useful source of information for this entire game. Like, it really is. It's got everything on there. So if you have any questions ever, you can just Google it and it'll probably come up with the RuneScape Wiki. And that's where you want to look. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found something that will make your lives a little bit easier. I hope there's some stuff in here that you are going to now take and, and adapt to your own gameplay. If there is, let me know which one you're going to take and what you're going to use. And if there's any other things you can think of that would be super useful for other people, then get in the comments, leave them there so other people can scroll through and find some more as well. Because, of course, I can only cover so many of them. But that's pretty much going to be it for me today. So thank you all so, so much for watching. So I'd say thank you as always to my channel members for the extra support that you guys do provide. I really, really appreciate it. Of course, your names will be on screen now. So thank you all so much to you guys. If anyone else is interested in joining the channel members, you do get some perks while you do support me as well. So if you're interested, click the join button that's by the subscribe button. It doesn't charge you straight away. Just click on that. You can see what perks you do get. And if there's anything that interests you, then that's awesome. But otherwise, guys, thank you all so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.